Once upon a time, roughly 300 years after the birth of Jesus Christ, there was a man named St. Marinus. He lived on the island of Rab, Croatia, on the Dalmatian coast. In order to avoid persecution from the emperor Diocletian, he fled to Mount Titano in Italy, where you can see behind me. Christians at the time who wanted to avoid similar circumstances to him came to this spot. St. Marinus built a church, developed a community, and in turn, a state was born. Welcome to San Marino. This video is centered on what to experience and how to get the most out of a short visit here, besides the various pageantries the country offers. I start my trip here, outside the public palace. San Marino, since its creation in the 4th century, managed to avoid any substantial periods of occupation, owing to its ability to pacify its enemy through help, collaboration and neutrality. In many respects, it was very clever in doing this and, respectively, still keeps its sovereignty. It's one of the oldest, if not the oldest, sovereign state in the world. San Marino is also one of the few countries to exist that's ruled by a diarchy, known as Captain's Regent. The co-rulers are appointed the position for six months at a time before new leaders are chosen. As a result, the country has seen in more female heads of state than anywhere else in the world. You can also walk into the public palace and enter the chamber of the Grand and General Council, where the Republic's Parliament are seated. Ceremonies are also an integral part of the state. Some important dates include two annual institutional events on the 1st of April and October, when the Captain's Regent are installed into office. Another is on the 3rd of September, which marks a time when San Marino was founded by St. Marinus. The day sees in a time for feasts, the celebratory crossbow contest, and other historical reenactments. San Marino certainly is small. At 61 square kilometers, the entire country is notably smaller than most cities globally. It's rated the fifth smallest country in the world and the third smallest in Europe after the Vatican City and Monaco. The country has a population of around 33,000 people, 4,000 of which inhabit the city of San Marino, the capital, also known simply as San Marino. Compared to other parts of the country, the capital is charming. Its position is dramatically placed on a ridge, overlooking the rest of the country in all directions. San Marino lies approximately 15 kilometers by road from Rimini. You can enter the country by the SS72, which is the major highway connecting both places at the town of Dogana, just to the north on my left hand side here. I'm sitting outside a restaurant almost at the top of Mount Titano. I've just ordered a nice fresh, Sorry. no problem, orange juice. The views from most of these areas are pretty spectacular and I'm ordering my first Piadina which is the traditional dish of not only San Marino, but the regions around San Marino. Often it's served with parma ham, mozzarella, and here it is, the Piadina. Number four. Number four is me. So this is the Piadina with parma ham and mozzarella. And number five, that's the chicory, parma ham. Thank you, grazie. There we go. One Piadina. The service was very quick. I ordered it about two minutes ago. As you can see, inside is the filling. Very thin. I'm not quite sure how to eat this. I'm going to use it like a pizza. I will say it's, it's quite dry, but Very filling. You can taste the mozzarella and the parma ham very well. It's a very nice balance of flavours there. Do in San 
San Marino is get your passport stamped at the local tourist office. Just around the corner here. You can also write a postcard, get some San Marino stamps and send it. One of the things that I've noticed about San Marino is the number of weapon shops, particularly selling guns. So I'm going to go in and take a look and see what all the fuss is about. So this is one of many gun shops I've noticed. There's quite a spread of... No, no. Are these, are these real guns? No. I don't know, I was going to say because they look, they look... Yeah, they look like real, but they're not real because they're... In this side, they're toys, yeah. like rifles. In this side, you can see the um, rifles with pellets, so the, the power is low, that's so point finds out. It's easy to, to buy because you don't need any, any license. Oh, I see. So you don't need any license for any of the guns in here? Nope, exactly. And what, what about the knives and... Oh, uh, it's, it's free for, for knives to, to sell it, to use it, uh, and uh, there's not a specifically uh, like a source of for the knives. Okay. And obviously the crossbowing is, the crossbow competition is very popular in San Marino, so I imagine some people come here and they buy the crossbows for shooting on the, on the special crossbow men's range. Yeah, 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 but we have a... Um, also the online shop. So for the most of the, the, the selling part is online or oh, I say e-commerce. But... Good. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're welcome. So this is the Stamp and Coin Museum. One of the interesting things I found out about this place is whilst it was founded in the 4th century, it didn't have its own coinage until 1500 years later. And these are the first coins. Now, they have the Euros. Three towers lie positioned on the fortifications of Mount Titano. Built at various points in history, you can walk in between them along these little footpaths. Coming here just before sundown is perhaps the best time owing to great light. Furthermore, you're able to scale some of the towers. One is unfortunately not open to the public. That's Montale just behind me here. The other two being Guaita, meaning guarding tower, and Chester, which is also dubbed the second tower. The three towers are also emblazoned on the coat of arms of the San Marino flag. San Marino in the evening is serene, lit up by lamp posts. It's coming up to seven o'clock and this is how busy it is. It's very picturesque. At 10 p.m. I'm the only one making noise here. Clearly it's pretty deserted. There's a few romancing couples dallying around here and having sunk a couple of cocktails and two glasses of wine it's a very nice place to walk around at this time of night highly recommend it for any thrill seekers out there this place is not going to be the best spot to come that said where it may lack in adrenaline pumping activities it's certainly a cute destination to visit spending a few days here guarantees some comfort stays gratifying food in a laid-back environment. I stayed here for two nights in order to soak up the atmosphere, get a slice of the history and glance at the quirky museums interspersed around the old town. That's all for now. Do stay tuned for my next videos. Stay safe and bye for now.